We back at it. Week 10. Let's talk NFL football. We got a big time show today. And the conversations of where the league is at right now as a whole. What's going on? The undefeated Houston Texans. Their matchup with New England Patriots and Coach Belichick. Week 10, though, through 10 weeks of football, what we got going on right now. There's some exciting football. A lot of young talent running around. Teams are rebuilding. You got teams that are making a push to better make it to the big guy dance. You know what I'm saying? Everything's going on in the in the day's world of NFL right now. But the story of the season thus far has to be the play of Shador Sanders and how Coach Deion Sanders and the offensive coordinator, Sean Lewis, has their quarterback playing like he's been in the league for 10 years. I think they made a statement last week against the Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs aren't off to a great start, however, but they still have the best quarterback in the league in Patrick Mahomes. They have the face of the league in Patrick Mahomes. And he showed who he was and how he was able to fight back from, you know, a, a really bad start of a football game and brought this game back to a one-score game late in the fourth quarter before losing the, the ball game, 80-51. to 51. Now, with that being said, man, we have to take a look at where we at far as the standings and where everybody's playing at. You look at the Seattle Seahawks. They picked up Lamar Jackson out of free agency with AR-15. Now, AR-15 was the starting quarterback of this team last year, but picking up a Lamar Jackson, some asked what was the sense of that, right? Well, Skabibbles, last year... AR-15, Anthony Richardson was thrown into the fire as a starting quarterback for the Seattle Seahawks team. If there's any team that's been making a push in the offseason and through the draft and through free agency, it's been the Seattle Seahawks. I just don't see how you can see a Lamar Jackson, you know, to me, one of the best quarterbacks in the, in the league as well, sitting in free agency. Now, the Baltimore Ravens, they stood, they stood firm on not paying Lamar Jackson. They already moved on. Uh, which was to me, uh, I don't understand how they can let a talent of that sort of that caliber go. But then you have him sitting in free agency, and there's a numerous teams that could use him at quarterback. And you see the Seattle Seahawks; they paid him. They paid him, you know, on a fran- you know on a uh, on a uh, free agency uh, contract for this year. They bought his services in. And it's only right. At the end of the day, you go through training camp. You go through all the things you need to go through. And, and after preseason is over, they picked up Lamar Jackson. And he is now the starting quarterback for this football team. I, I like it. I'm not mad at it. I, I, man, we're going to have a good debate on this one then, Skabibbles. Well, Skadimes, listen. I like it. I think, you know, you bring in Lamar Jackson. You give Anthony Richardson another year of development. It let him you know, get take his development. So sometimes throwing quarterbacks into the trial of fire could really mess their career up, right? I think this isn't a bad move here. You know, this is a rental move, not a uh, not a uh, a buy for uh, for a long for a long situation, right? This is a rental move. Like the way they're building their team, I could see Lamar Jackson getting these guys in the playoffs right now. They have the core around it. They got a lot of young pieces. They tore free agency up. I think this team is ready to you know, play in the playoffs over there in the NFC. Um, and on the flip side of that, you give in AR-15, who has the skill set of Lamar Jackson. They say he's a mixture between him and Cam Newton. You give him a season behind Lamar Jackson and learn you know, some of the things Lamar has done. You know, He was the MVP of this league. right? Some of the things he has done, you give him a situation where he can learn from that, and it could make him a better quarterback. Not so fast, Skadimes. Listen, this can backfire in their face. I don't know if Lamar Jackson makes it through the rest of the season with this team. And why do you say that? Well, I think if it's a team that comes in and makes a trade for this for Lamar Jackson before the deadline, I think he, Lamar Jackson will be somewhere else. Well, why would you say that if he's starting, he's the starting quarterback for this team? I think that that right there would make sense. Not to say that you don't understand football or you don't know, you know, how football goes or nothing like that. Not, not you know, not criticizing your football knowledge and criticizing your football thought right now. Like, how do you go pick up Lamar Jackson out of free agency and then? He won't be on your team the rest of the season. All right, so you want to make it all about football right now, and I'm going to make it about GM and I'm going to make it about ownership and GM and understanding leverage here, right? Lamar Jackson, as the star quarterback 
for the Seattle Seahawks. Yes, it's a good look for right now. But unless they're going to pay that contract that Lamar wants, why do you pick up a Lamar Jackson at this point right now? Well, if you use your GM, put your GM thinker cap on, a trade for Lamar Jackson right now will put this Seattle Seahawks in a very, very good situation. What's the what's the negative of trading Lamar Jackson? You go back to your your rookie, well, your second year quarterback that started for you last year in AR fifteen. The positive is if you trade Lamar Jackson and get capital for him, this is a guy you picked out of free agency. You're not paying him a lot of money. He, he and then and then you get to send him somewhere else, and you can get capital. I just explained to you how the Seattle Seahawks they played big in free agency and they did really good in the draft. For the last two years, this team has tore free agency in the draft up. So Skadimes, would you agree with me that? Seattle Seahawks has been very active in the free agency and, and the draft. Would you, you would you agree with the roster that they put together? I'm not saying they didn't put a good roster together. I just don't think they go get a guy of Lamar Jackson's talent and not think about him being... I mean, we're, we're looking at a quarterback that's still in his 20s. We're not looking at a quarterback that has, you know, that doesn't have football legs left or, you know, could, you know this guy is, is one of the best football players in the NFL, so I just don't see how they go get him out of free agency and then, you know, just to better fire sell him. Well, they drafted one of the better quarterbacks of last year's draft. But, yeah, we've not seen how that quarterback has been. Well, we have. We have a season under our belt to see exactly what type of season he's had. 29 touchdowns, 10 interceptions is a very good year for a guy like Anthony Richardson. 97.3 QBR rating. I mean, he was sacked 42 times, though, right? That comes with a young quarterback. 61 completion percentage, you know, is upside there. He has he he has no throw no passes attempted this year, right? Well, because they got Lamar Jackson right after preseason. Exactly. They have a quarterback that they know that's their future, right? Anthony Richardson is the future of the Seattle Seahawks. Would you agree with me there, Skadimes? Yes, sir. I definitely agree there. Completely agree there. All right. So Lamar Jackson. I'm not saying that they can that they can go away from Lamar Jackson by trading him, how would that affect their offense? I understand that, right? This guy, this kid is playing good football for him right now. AR-15 hasn't really taken any snaps as a starter or really any snaps at all outside of preseason. But Lamar, Lamar Jackson is still a heavy sought-after quarterback. People just don't want to pay that tag. There's teams out there that can use a Lamar Jackson right now, right? And there's teams out there that would rather get him in a trade right now and then be able to franchise tag him versus the Seahawks using him for a one-year rental the entire year. All right, Skadimes, I see your logic. I understand that. But now you got to go back and think about why we're talking about the Seattle Seahawks right now. The first thing we did was look at standings, right? The Seahawks are 8-0 and right now. So you telling me that this GM and this ownership is willing to cut into that 8 and 0 season. They're having one of the best seasons of their entire franchise history with Lamar Jackson as their quarterback. And you're telling me they're willing to cut into that for a GM move. I just don't see it happening. This team is playing lights out right now. They are undefeated. They're the only other undefeated team in the league outside of the Houston Texans right now. And I just think they're going to see it through with Lamar Jackson. The real question will be if Lamar Jackson gets this team in the playoffs. And I think Lamar Jackson is, is beyond just making the playoffs. If the Seahawks play in the Super Bowl this year with Lamar Jackson as a starting quarterback of this football team, are they not? bringing him back and giving him the money he's asked before. All right, Skadons, I will have to agree with you there. I understand your logic there, and I understand that. And it's very hard to tap into an 8-0 football team. But the NFL is not for long. And the NFL stands for not for long, in my opinion. But I also think you got to think about your future here. You have a quarterback that played really well as a rookie. With all the pieces around that quarterback, I just think if you're looking into your future, would you agree with me that Lamar Jackson is not the future of this team with AR-15 being drafted in the top 10 last year? I think the record 
that the Seahawks have right now. And I think that all depends on how they finish. If this team goes to a Super Bowl, then Lamar Jackson is the uh, foreseeable future right now, in my opinion. The AR-15 going to have to go the uh, Aaron Rodgers route or sitting on the bench for a couple of years until, you know, they were, he's ready to move on or Lamar's ready to be done with the fo- with football. Because if he gets this team to a Super Bowl, I just can't see how you interrupt an 8-0 season right now. Here's the thing. Did the did the Seahawks expect to be eight and zero right now? I don't know, but my sources tell me that they brought Lamar Jackson in to to give him a season on the field of playing and understand that his value can go up how good he played. So I don't think they looking at Lamar Jackson as their future, whether he gets them to a Super Bowl or not. And I don't think that they're locked into Lamar Jackson to the point where you know them being eight and zero will stop them from getting a breakout deal. I mean. We're, we're talking about somebody coming in and giving up the house to get a Lamar Jackson. I think it's possible for that to happen. And if that if that type of offer is on the table, we're talking about the same offer that Sean Watson got uh, from the Cleveland Browns. Like something like that, I think the Seahawks will be foolish not to make that type of move. Well, you just said the NFL is not for now, not for long, right? So the moment they interrupt that eight and zero season, that coaching that coaching staff and GM will not have a job if they interfere with what's going on right now. If I'm an owner, what are you more intrigued with? The fact that your team is eight and zero and the best team in the NFC right now, and possibly the best team in the eight, in the NFL, and or the future down the line right now to interrupt a perfect season right now. I mean, you're giving us nothing but writing material and and talking points to talk about with your scenario. I think the best thing for us to do is sit back and and, and see what happens here with this 8-0 team. They are the number one team in the NFL right now. Seahawks are 8-0 right now. Um, And the Houston Texans are number two in the league. Two of the only remaining undefeated teams that are left in the NFL right now. The Rams hold the number three spot at six and two, and right behind them is the Panthers. And both these teams, the Rams, they didn't, I don't think they attacked the way the Panthers attacked the draft in the offseason. When you take a look at what the Panthers did and who they have over there, it's big time, right? They made trades, they made moves, they did, they did with a, what an NFL franchise is supposed to do and you want to win right now. In my opinion, they had one of their better off seasons as well. You look at the Panthers and what they what they brought in here is amazing right now. And they're doing it once again with a quarterback that came out of the same draft class as AR fifteen. Miles Brenning has has his team six and two right now. Right? He's the starting quarterback over there. My question to you, Skadimes, is Matt Corral is his, is it is he his chance to be a starter in this in, in the league is it over with I, as of right now i do I, although i think he's in the right spot right now i think him being the backup for this football team is is probably the perfect scenario they want to have right other than that go get a veteran but the fact that this team traded for jonathan Taylor is the reason why this team is winning ball games right now they got if not the best runner back in the league they got one of the best runner backs in the league not only that, they got speed with Chris Tyree as his backup. They also got the TCU running back, Kendra, Kendra and, uh, Miller. These are two very, very physical running backs, right? Teller and Miller. And then you got the home run hitter, Chris Tyree, that can play slot, some slot receiver for you as well. Special teams, kick return, punt return. And with that 4-2 speed, this kid can really, really get things going for this Carolina Panthers team. This team is back to the type of football they was playing when they were playing for shooting, went to the Super Bowl, in my opinion. Uh... I think they have everything they need right now. You know, they did make the move with the DJ Moore. Uh, Mario Williams is over here. Malachi Wyman is over here. They got Terrence Marshall. So they got two big physical receivers, and they got a really good slot receiver in Mario Williams. Luke Musgrave and Tommy Trimble at the tight end position. I mean, they they, they did their thing, right? They got one of the best tackles, young tackles in the league. 
Um, you look at Cooper BB from out of Kansas State is sitting here. I mean, this team got better. They got one of the best centers out of last year's draft and John Michael Schmitz. They are legit up front. Austin Corbett is on superstar level right now. He's playing at a high level as well. And then that right tackle, Teller Moulton, has been consistent at 30 years old there. But they also brought in Blake Fisher, the rookie out of Notre Dame, that, that to me will take over for Moulton. So this offensive line is legit. And you can see why Jonathan Teller was so excited to go there. All right. You got Brian Burns here still, and he's an all pro. They also drafted Tyree Wilson, right? He was one of the best edge rushers coming out of the draft right now. He had a superior first year. Um, his development is there. Um, let's look at what he did in year one. This kid had 13 and a half sacks as a rookie. He's at eight sacks right now. He's going to surpass that 13 and a half if he stays on course right now. So when it comes down to edge rushing, the Panthers are have two of the better DNs in the league right now. Right. Then you go play with their D tackles. They got Michael Hall Jr., who me, who to me, he got picked right where he should have got picked at. And the top five. He was he's that good, right? Um, out of Ohio State. You know, he stayed that extra year that are coming out when his other classmates came out. And he's playing with seven tackles for loss and four sacks right now on a as a rookie. Thirty three tackles. This kid is the animal right now. Um, I really like the pick there. Uh, they solidified their uh, front four for sure with the Michael Hall Jr. draft pick. Um, first round talent, and they get him early too in the draft pick seven. So he's a top ten pick, um, and I like what they got up front right now. And that makes it hard to do anything with them. As far as dropping back to throw a pass, and as far as the run game, they are stout there, right? Um, they do have Chase Young, Chase on from uh, Jaguars that they picked up in free agency. Zavin Collins came from over from Arizona. Uh, Eugene Asante's here from out of Auburn. Um, Jordan Lewis from Southern, the HBCU uh, outside linebacker. Um, they also drafted Cedric Gray from North Carolina. And then in the secondary, you got Dante Jackson at 28 years old. He's still one of the fastest DBs in the league. J.C. Horn is still growing into that role of the best corner on his team, right? And then you got Makai Gardner, the 6'2", 212-pound freak at cornerback from LSU, Jalen Jones as well. So they went and got guys not to Jalen Jones from Texas A&M, Jalen Jones from uh, Ole Miss solid right there. Then you look at the free safety Kirby Joseph. He comes in from uh, from uh, Detroit. Xavier Woods comes in from the Cowboys. So they bring in a lot of free agency. Jeremy Chin is still Jeremy Chin. And to me, this roster is made over right now. These guys have a good roster. On the flip side of that, Teller Rapp has developed into a stud for the Rams, right? Um, I like the Rams roster. I start with their defense. You look at the safety position. I think they can get a little better at safety. They do need help there. But Jalen Ramsey, they got Jalen Jones from Texas A&M as their number two corner. Josh Newton out of TCU. They also got Kobe Durant still here. So they got good corners going on right now. At the linebacker level, they are fast with Davis Gathers coming from Seattle. I mean, from Cincinnati, Ernest Jones is Ernest Jones. They picked up one of the best uh, line, middle linebackers in the draft and Greg, Greg Penn II uh, from out of LSU. Um, and then they also got Mikel Jones from Syracuse. So they got some depth there. Terrence Lewis out of UC, UCF is, is pretty fast. And they still got Leonard Floyd, who's still, you know, playing that backup role, in my opinion. Um, they do need help at the D tackle position here. Um, and, and Aaron Donald. Well, Aaron Donald at 33 years old on the field, you know what you're getting there. Dante Steele from out of West Virginia. They're at the end. Um, you look at the offensive line. Their offensive line is, isn't really looking at a young, all of them one year in. Like, they literally attacked the offensive line last year's draft, 2023 draft, right? Um, where they got most of their starters are from that class. So they got guys that can grow. You got Beller Cup, the rookie at tight end, sitting here on this team. You're looking at the wide receivers, Cooper Cup. They bring in Troy Franklin. They got Tutu Atwell still here, Greg Dortch, and then Frank Darby. Um, not really a bunch of names that you'll look at and be like, oh, my God. But Troy Franklin with Cooper Cup, I think that gives them a one-two punch. They picked up one of the better t fullbacks in this draft, too, and Pliwa, who comes in as a dog in my front. Then they go get Kareem Hunt. They also bring in Kavase Smoke this year's draft and Basha Will Tootin, the New Jersey product. Their running back room is the reason why this team has six wins and two losses right now. Um, Kavase Smoke brings them uh, a, a hammer and nail approach with Tootin, right? 
Kareem Hunt at 29 years old, you can't, you, you know, you bring in a veteran like this for these younger kids, the guys to grow up a little bit. But when you're looking at this this backfield, I think they got a really strong running back room. Um, and I think Sean McVay loves that. Clayton Toon has played better than most would have thought, right? Now, he was really highly, highly uh, graded coming out of Houston. Um, he definitely is a guy that can fling the ball around the park. Um, and, you know, you give McVay this type of uh, quarterback and he feels like he's right back in contentions again. And you can see it like this team is playing a little bit higher than what their roster looks like. But when you got all pros and veterans running around like a Cooper Cup and an Aaron Donald, you can get a lot of things done with this football team. I can't argue with you there, Skibibbles. Flat out. I understand that. I like what I see there as well. As we can continue to go down, you're looking at the number 55 team in the league, and that's the uh, New Orleans Saints. And this team is 6-3. and three. Khalid Williams, right? Some say he was the number one player in the draft, although he didn't go number one. Some say he was the number one player in the draft, like the best college football player in the draft was Khalid Williams, right? And then you're always going to argue if Deion Sanders wasn't the head coach of the Houston Texans, does Shador Sanders go number one overall? Right. And then some would say with the Saints, their roster, you know, they go get Isaiah Simmons and they plan him at safety. They're not planning him at linebacker. And he's an all pro right now. He's up for the defensive back award right now. They are doing a really good job over there in New Orleans. The next team, number six on this list is the Baltimore Ravens with three losses. Now, the thing was, everybody thought the Ravens would be done. Right. No, no, no more Lamar Jackson. Life after Lamar Jackson is a six and three football team. Both the next two teams got rid of their franchise quarterbacks. Jalen Hurts for the Philadelphia Eagles, Lamar Jackson for the Baltimore Ravens. Both of those quarterbacks showed them teams that they're not done. Jalen Hurts was the starting quarterback in Chicago up until preseason was over, but Bryce Young was able to take that job back. Now, in Chicago, you got Jalen Hurts, Bryce Young, and Justin Fields all on the same roster. So there's quarterbacks out there that teams are going to go get off that one team. This is why I think Lamar Jackson is going to stay put in Seattle because how much debt, uh, I mean, how many quarterbacks is still available for teams to go pluck through? You know the Chicago Bears aren't going to keep all three of those quarterbacks, right? So teams have quarterbacks they can go attack way more cheaper and have like a little bit more lifespan, meaning they're younger, right? But when we take a look at the Baltimore Ravens and the Philadelphia Eagles, the Eagles is arguably one of the better teams in the last two years, too, as far as what they did in free agency in the draft as well. I hold Seattle in a high standard with their roster and the makeover they did. The uh, New York Jets is another team that played really well in free agency and drafted. And then you're looking at the Baltimore Ravens. I'm not saying they had they had great off seasons. It started with the letting go of Lamar, not signing him back. It started there. But DJ Ugalele is the starting quarterback over there now. And he has his team 6-3 and three right now. But is that because of DJ Ugalele or is that the team that's built around? And this is why the Ravens, it's the Ravens way. This is why they don't pay quarterbacks. Lamar would have had to win a Super Bowl for the Baltimore Ravens for them to pay him. Why? Because you saw it with Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco wasn't getting the money. He was ready to hold out. Then he goes out and wins the Super Bowl and gets the $100 million contract. Simple as that. They were not going to take that gamble on Lamar Jackson because of his play style. Simple as that. We've been going through this. You know guys move the goalposts when it comes down to Lamar Jackson. All right, but my question is, is DJ Ugalele a better fit for the Baltimore Ravens? He has this team 6-3 and three right now, which was a way better record than what the Baltimore Ravens had last year to start off at this point. I thought I answered that, Skadimes. What I'm saying is, DJ Ugalele, yes, I think he has a great upside as a rookie quarterback. But I do think that DJ Ugalele is surrounded by so much good talent that Baltimore just needs him to be, uh, what's the word? Uh, uh, he don't need to be a playmaker like Lamar was, right? He can just be a game manager, right? And I think it's going to fit with Todd Monken at the offensive coordinator. It's going to fit. What the, what the Baltimore Ravens are trying to do. They want to run a ball down your throat and throw the ball off a of play action to the tight ends and play very good defense. Simple as that. 
Uh, I mean, I understand that, though, but we're still looking at Lamar Jackson not being signed back by the Ravens and DJ Ugalele being a quarterback over there. And is he the quarterback that could take this team to a Super Bowl? That's the question, right? DJ Ugalele. Well, I mean, you look at the numbers and what he's doing this year. I, I mean, the numbers don't lie, right? 97.3 QBR, 1,638 yards, 10 touchdowns, 5 picks. What I like, the fact is that as a quarterback, this kid is 66%, right? On a completion percentage, 8.1 yards again. That's what I wanted to get you right there, the 8.1 yards of play. This kid is dink and dunk, and he's playing with the tight ends, and they're running the football, and it's successful. That's why they're 6-3. and three. I mean, I don't see how you can look at the yard per average attempt and, see, and think that that's a bad thing. I'm not saying that, Skibibbles. I'm saying 8.1 yards is telling me they're not asking him to do anything. I mean, DJ Ugalele is supposed to be a strong arm guy, right? A guy that can fling the ball downfield, a pro-style quarterback. This is a guy that, you know, before the Clemson situation, he was one of the thought, most sought-after quarterbacks going into college, right? Him and Bryce Young's uh, careers went two different directions, right? Two different directions. Bryce Young lived up to the hype. DJ Ugalele didn't. That's all I'm saying. Is he, uh, you know, we have this, we've seen this all the time in the NFL. Guys didn't have a great year in college or didn't have a name in college and then get to the NFL and uh, boom, out of nowhere, they're Pro Bowl players. I don't say, I'm not saying DJ is a Pro Bowl player, but I'm saying if he's the right fit for this scheme and this team, then this team can do some good things. And you're going to tell me if DJ Ugalele gets this team to a playoff, that, that Lamar Jackson not being signed back, the ownership and the GM, they knew something we didn't know. I agree with you there. I still think Lamar Jackson was worth the money and worth to be signed to a long-time contract for the Baltimore Ravens. And somebody will sign Lamar Jackson to a contract before it's all said and done. I, I'm agreeing with you too, Skadines. I said it. But it's the Seattle Seahawks that's going to sign him, not who you not trade him in the middle of an 8-0 season. I mean, I don't mean to go back and beat the same horn or beat the drum that's been drum played already. I'm just saying you're making my point for me. Lamar Jackson will be a Seattle Seahawk as long as they're winning ball games. He ain't going anywhere. All right. Well, we're talking about the Baltimore Ravens uh, roster right now, right? They still have a problem. No, they don't. They got rid of it. There is no more J.K. Dobbins on this football team. They're playing with the rookie sensation, well, the one-year sensation of Jameer Gibbs. Jameer Gibbs, to me, fits this offense better than J.K. Dobbins did. Tank Bigsby from Auburn, they got themselves a power back there. And Raheem Blackshire is still on his roster from out of free agency. So I like this. I like the running back room because this is why that 8.1 yards of pop from DJ Uga Ugly is going to be good because they got a running back that can handle that, right? He throws, he catches the ball very well out of the backfield. And for his size, he definitely can run in between the tackle, something a lot of guys wouldn't give him credit for being able to do. Men and women lie, numbers don't. I mean, he rushed 4,000 yards last year. This man had 20 rushing touchdowns, right? One fumble on 299 carries last year. He already had an 802 right now and 11 touchdowns, which may come the number two uh, rushing team in the league. When we went over it, uh, three, it's three young running backs that's dominating the league right now, right? Um, and Jameer Gibbs is one of them. Anthony Israel is the other out of Houston right now. But right now with 11 rushing touchdowns, it seems like he's going to have a better season than he had last year, right? 4.6 yards of average versus the four yards. He does have one fumble. He only had one fumble all of last year itself. But what does he do out the backfield for this team? He had 39 catches and three touchdowns last year. He had 17 this year. This is why I think he's the better back than J.K. Dobbins, right? They don't have Gus the Bus or J.K. still remaining on this team. And then Quentin Johnson brings them where Rashad Bateman brings them a very, very, very good tandem on the outside, right? You got a guy that that's six four with really good speed, and then Rashad Bateman at six foot. These two guys are really good on the outside, giving Duvernay the slot duty job here, and then a Brian Thompson, Jr., Thomas Jr. from out of LSU, another six four. The Ravens have literally went back to the 2011 Ravens, right? Uh, well, Anquan Bolden, the year they won a Super Bowl. I like the size at the, at the receiver position they got. 
And then Tylen Wallace is still here too. So they got two slot type of uh, receivers, but they got big body receivers that make it hard for you to play with a quarterback like DJ Ugalele and his pro style of play. You got guys on the outsides with Quentin Johnson, Rashad Bateman, and Brian Thompson, and Brian Thomas. These are six four, six foot, six four guys that can go get the football. He don't have to be super accurate. He just got to put it in their vicinity, and their catch radius is different, right? And then you're looking at the tight end play here. They don't just got Mike and Mark Andrews, you know, some question, why would they bring in a Michael Meyer, right? With Isaiah likely still on his roster. This is probably the, the best three tight end team in the league right now. Well, we saw Houston Texans make that same type of move, right? They get Dan Darnell Washington in the first round. Then they turn around in the very next year and they get Brock Bowers in the first round. I mean, Todd Monken is definitely a tight end guy, right? He had three of them at Georgia. He got them now. And I think this is why you're seeing the 8.1 yards. And I'm going to keep going back to that is because their strength or their offense is with these guys right here, the three tight ends and that running back. And I think as long as they, you know, can keep that quarterback safe with throwing to safety vows, right? Isaiah Likely, Michael Meyer, and, and Mark Andrews, you know, you got, well, Michael Myers is probably the best tight end in, 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 in college football his last year in football, right? I mean, and then Mark Andrews is arguably one of the best tight ends in the league right now. And we saw Isaiah Likely and what he did in his rookie year. So we, uh, we like the, like the weapons here. And I think what the Baltimore Ravens did was they wanted to build this offensive line stronger. They did exactly that with the, with, with not, would not paying Lamar Jackson, they would not have been able to build this team the way they did. And I think they built it the right way. Ronnie Stanley still here, the 30 year old veteran, but they pick up the best offensive lineman in the draft and JC Latham from out of Alabama. He's starting left guard for this team. You still got Tyler Lindenbaum at center. He was a first round pick for this team. Then you got Layden Robinson. Now he's, he, he's out of Texas A&M, 6'4", 330 pounds. You got a guy that's really fast at guard, right? Big buck. Body guy at guard, nice strength. I like it, right? Two rookies start on his offensive line, and then that right tackle, they still playing with Rob Havenstein, who they got from the Rams, right? But Wyatt Millam from West Virginia is still on his roster, and you still got Daniel Falele still here, 6'8", 380 pounds. So they really revamped that offensive line for sure, right? Corey Foreman comes out of USC with, with Justin Matabuke, defensive ends. You got JT Tamaloa from Ohio State, who's definitely one of the best pass rushers in last year's draft or this year's draft. All right, Brennan Jackson out of West Washington State, who's a speedster at the DN. And we're not even talking about Michael Pierce is still here. They picked up Shamar Turner from uh, Texas A&M at D-Tackle, and Travis Jones is still here. This team is loaded up front. Adolfi Owe is still here. David Ajabo is still here. Tyus Bowser is still here. He's all at all pass rushers at the linebacker position, right? You know they run a 3-4 defense. Roquan Smith is here still. Ed, Ed, Eric, they did lose They did lose my guy, Patrick Queen, but I think Ventrell Miller is the new Patrick Queen for this team at middle linebacker from out of Florida last year. Remember, he came off a very big injury his last year in college football. I think he's getting up to speed now. So I like what they got at uh, linebacker uh, for right now, right? Darrell Nuchami, who played really well uh, in college for Maryland, he was underrated in my opinion. I like that. I like him. So they good there now and in the secondary. Did they get better in the secondary? I think they did. They, they still got Marcus Peters. They didn't. They let him go in free agency and then brought him back, right? But Cam Smith was the top five corner in 2023's draft. You tag, tag him up with Marlon Humphreys and give him a year of experience like he has right now. You got two really good corners on the outside, which you could bring the veteran Marcus Peters and let him play slot and beat up on these slot receivers. Although he's 31 and he's starting to slow down a little bit, he's still subrevial, right? Awareness, play rec, he's still there. He's going to be able to make plays for this team while Jalen Armand Davis still grows up and then Demarion Williams is still growing up. We like it over here. They got a really good defense. I think Baltimore's back to what they want to be. Still got Marcus Williams here. They also got the Marco Helms out of Alabama at safety. And then we got the man child. Kyle Hamilton is here, right? Theo Jackson is the backup there. But Kyle Hamilton is a monster back there. And with two years of experience already, this kid is going to be a superstar. I think he'll be a pro bowler this year. Baltimore looks really good. And they're playing really good. And then there's the Philadelphia Eagles. So the Philadelphia Eagles did not bring back Jalen Hurts, but they got the best 
HBCU quarterback in the country, Davis Richards. Remember, this is the quarterback that beat Shador Sanders in Jackson State. Uh, Coach Deion Prime Sanders last year at Jackson State before he took the Colorado job. He came back and coached that game. And Davis Richards uh, won in a shootout over Shador, right? And this kid is exactly the same piece that they had with Jalen Hurts, a physical quarterback that can run the read option but can still make the throws to be able to make things happen right now. I like it. They bring in Teddy Bridgewater as his backup. You got a veteran behind Davis Richards, right? And I think while we're wa watching Shador Sanders do all types of historical things as a rookie, we're sleeping on Davis Richards, right? I think this kid is good enough to be the franchise quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles, and I'm not singing the same tune as I song with Lamar Jackson and the Jalen Hurts thing. I think letting Jalen Hurts go and bringing in Davis Richards, I think it improved this football team at the quarterback position. I know Jalen Hurts was playing at an all-time high, but when you want to save the money that he was asking for to better build this roster in the way you want to do, for them to better attack free agency and attack the draft the way they wanted to, you have to make a big-time decision like that, and it makes that decision easy when you bring in a kid that everybody thought, well, he did it at HBC you it ain't the same football blah 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 well we're seeing it this is the new modern day steve mcnair right here at davis richards miles sanders was able to come back after uh going to free agency kenny gangwell they really didn't get better at the running back position but when you look at the receivers over here aj brown Devontae smith and then they bring in the speed burner from out of Texas, Xavier Worthy. They also brought in Moose Muhammad. And you're going to see a theme with this team. And it's almost like the Houston Texans when they bring in those ex-NFL players' kids. That's what's happening over here for the Philadelphia Eagles. Moose Muhammad is going to be a problem in this offense over here going to be a problem. Xavier Worthy gives them the speed to stretch the field. As good as Devontae Smith is, he's not a speed burner, right? We're talking about 4-3 speed with Xavier Worthy. Now, that gives you A.J. Brown tearing up the possession game, Devontae Smith being that unguardable route runner, and Xavier Worthy is the guy that's going stretch the top of anybody's defense, right? With Moose Muhammad coming in and giving him that fourth receiver that can literally really, really run routes and he can make plays after the catch. The Eagles didn't stop there, though. We're going to act like Robbie Anderson don't got the speed. Well, Robbie Anderson 31 years old, and he's still with that 4-3 speed. Uh, and I think, yeah, you bring that veteran in, I just don't know if there's enough footballs to go around for Robbie Anderson. Right. I think when we just talked about the first four receivers on this team, these guys are really active. They're ready to go right now at the tight end position. Dallas Gutter still holds that down. He did bring in Luke Shoemaker from out of Michigan and they still got Grant Calactero. So I like their tight end room now. They got the big Samoan Jordan Mayalata starting left tackle. They also brought in Walker Parks from out of Clemson as a backup. Landon Dickerson. Right. What was the strength of the Philadelphia Eagles over the last couple of years? Their D line. David Andrews is that center from out of Georgia, right? They brought the veteran in while Brett Nee only on still develops. Now they lost they lost uh Kelsey from uh retiring, but they do got David Andrews to bring in a veteran there while they develop the young guy, right? Cody Mock, they got one of the better right guards in the league and Cody Mock and he was one of the better uh, guards in that draft class. I like what they got here. They also got Terrence Ferguson, the second from out of Alabama, another big time lineman at 6'4", 300 pounds. He's he's at 86 overall on most rosters. He'd be a starter right now, but Cody Mock is the guy, right? At right tackle, Leo Collins comes in, right? Uh, out of free agency, 31. So you can see the depth of this line and who's going to be the starters in the future. So I would say David Richardson, protection is all laid out for him over the next course of the next three to four years. Skadimes, I wouldn't agree. I wouldn't disagree with you at all. But what I like is the Philadelphia Eagles and what they did defensively, man. They drafted Jack Sawyer right away. That gives them an edge rusher, right? Some would say he was the best edge rusher on the team if Thule wasn't there, right? 
I don't know. They were both coming off that edge really well for Ohio State last year. But Jack Sawyer being at the left end right now, they give themselves a superstar at left end. Right, Josh Sweat has done nothing but continue to develop into a dog. We like him with that speed. He comes out of Florida State in year six. At the D-tackle, big Jordan Davis. They still got Javon Hargrave here and then Milton Watt Williams. But, you know, big bear, right? Jordan Davis is the man in the middle. At the linebacker, Hassan Reddick stays here. They bring in Patrick Johnson over from the Saints. Jeremiah Trotter Jr., right? Who was the famous middle linebacker for the Eagles? His father. They bring him in. You still got Edwards here. Martin is here, right? What happened to, uh, what happened to the kid from out of uh, Georgia? I think they might have got rid of him. But Brandon Smith comes in from uh, Pan the Panthers. They don't resign him. That speed, that and height. Cal Halliday, that rookie out of Michigan State. We have six five, six four. This linebacker room is fast, and that's where they get busy at. Darius Slade Jr., they retain him, although he's 33 years old, but they get the arguably the number one corner from the 2023 class in Devin Witherspoon. They got Desmond King here. They got Zach, Zach McPherson, third year, and Josh Joe. Um, but there are two corners right now. They do, they do have to find a way to uh, better this cornerback room. Darius Slade Jr. is 33 years old, but I think Devin Witherspoon will take over. For him, they just got to get deeper in depth, right? Quandre Diggs. Trey Dean is third from, a, from the Florida State. My boy, Key Lawrence, I like him at safety. I think they're really in good hands at the safety. And then they get Jordan Battle, their number one safety in the draft in 2023, as well as Blankenship. So the Eagles are in good hands right now, man. I like what we're seeing right here. As we round off our last top 10 teams right now, as you can see, Philadelphia has seven, and Shkadaddles really likes uh, the Philadelphia Eagles. How about the Cleveland Browns sitting at eight right now, six and three? I like them and Deshaun Watson. All that, all the capital they gave for Deshaun Watson, he's not even a starter over there. And then the Las Vegas Raiders are at nine. We like that roster. We got to see the Packers and the Houston up front. Now, the Houston tour. Uh, a new you know what in the Packers, but Packers are sitting at five and four. There's a few five and four teams that this number ten team can switch out real soon, but we like what we see here. We do know the Packers are in good hand at the quarterback position with O'Donnell as their starting quarterback. So as we look at the top ten right now, um, out of these top ten, those Kabibbles, who do you think we'll, we'll see in the Super Bowl if we had to go right now to pick a guy, two teams, AFC and NFC that play in the Super Bowl? Who would you pick? Obviously, both the undefeated teams, you know, we have to take a look at them. I'm going to be honest with you. I I think the Seahawks, you know, they, although I think the Seahawks will play in the Super Bowl, I just got this feeling that the NFC has, you know, some really good sleeping talent football teams over there that although the Seahawks are undefeated right now, I think when you get to the playoffs, there's a few teams that's even in the top 10 right now that can beat them in the playoffs, right? So I think the Eagles are going to the playoffs this year and they're going to win the Super Bowl. I think they're going to win the Super Bowl this year. But I, my matchup will be Houston and the Philadelphia Eagles. Wow, Philadelphia and Houston? I'm going with Houston and the Carolina Panthers. They're my two teams. All right, so nobody thinks the Seahawks are getting to the Super Bowl. What is it, man? Lamar Jackson is over there, got his team 8-0, and and we're not giving him no credit to be able to take this team to a Super Bowl. With that being said, the Skedaddles, Skedime Show, holla at us.